This is spot right here. Crazy. I ain't gonna put down this spot. It's the MTA, and then there's other railroad tracks there. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm looking for a park. Here? No. Right here. Oh, yeah, cool. Get our shit set up. Oh, on the other side. OJ, FYC crew in the house. I've been doing this shit since 86, since a wee young little lad. And I'm still here doing it, I ain't going away. I started writing graffiti more as, as an escape from real life because of problems at home. My home life was bad, my mother was fucked up on drugs, my mother would be passed out for hours at a time from shooting dope. So I would wander out into the streets and hang with the old people, the older kids who wrote graffiti. The train is coming. The graffiti scene in the 80s by itself, all the graffiti on the trains, had me mesmerized. The first time I saw it, I knew I wanted to be a part of that. And then when I started doing it, the graffiti became, for me, more about going on the actual missions. Getting your paint together, planning out what you're going to do, executing it, going on these missions with your boys and having fun and bugging out and shit. And then, you know, the next day, a week later, when you get to see what you did, you would live that, that moment again. My pain and suffering ultimately is what has driven me in my graffiti. When things is bad, I go out and I start bombing. It erases all of that shit in my life. The difference between painting now in my 40s and painting in the 80s, not even a teenager, I have a lot more to lose. I, I have I have a good paying job with a career. I have kids. I have a family. I got bills to pay. I've got responsibility. I'm responsible for other people. I'm not just responsible for myself. But graffiti is a part of me. It, it has made me the person I am today. One thing Scuff once said, people are like robots out here in the world. Graffiti separates me, separates us from being a robot in everyday life. As I get older, it gets a little harder from my youth, abusing my body, jumping off of things and falling and fucking dislocating body parts and, and breaking bones and shit over the years. That shit all adds up when you get older. I'm in my 40s, but I feel like I'm in my fucking 60s and shit. But it's like getting on the bike with the graffiti. When you get on that bike, you don't forget how to ride it. You get on it and you go. All that pain and suffering that I was talking about before that graffiti takes away, it even takes away that physical pain and suffering. It's a natural high. I just love to crush it, fucking destroy it. When I go write graffiti, I don't want to just put one tag. I want to put 10, 20, 100 tags. I'm going to make sure I fucking slap you in the face with my name. Make sure that you, you see what I'm doing. It's not that one is more important than the other. There's a balance. In my opinion, to be a successful graffiti writer, you have to have a balance of hand style, throw ups. You don't have to be the best piece of, you don't gotta be out there burning people, but you should you should know the basics, how to throw some block letters with some 3D and some designs in the shit, make it look flavor. 
You know what I'm saying? If you write something that's horrible or like a perfect example, these people who fucking bomb, I don't know, their shit is a flower character. And then I meet them in the street, I'm like, yo, what you writing? Like, oh, I write so-and-so, and they draw that flower character, and that shit's everywhere. I've seen it, but I don't know what the fuck it is. And when I meet the dude, he's like, yo, I write so I'm like, yo, I never heard of you, man. Key thing is recognition when you write graffiti. You need to have a straight letter throw up, and you need to have a bubble letter throw up. Because you do a highways, and you do straight letters, as them cars is going by, they can read it easily. If you're doing like these wild, crazy fucking bubble letters, ain't nobody gonna read it. And if they don't read it and they don't memorize it, they ain't gonna pay attention to your shit. It's gonna be annoying. Like, ah, yo, they go that nasty shit again. Like, I'd rather be known having some kind of flavor, some kind of style, instead of being the ugly nigga on the wall and shit. If you like to paint walls and paint permission spots, no, that's cool. That, you know, do what you do. If that's who you are as a person, I'm not mad at you. But don't be all up on the walls painting permission spots and, and, and when you meet people and shit, portray yourself as like somebody that's out here running in the streets bombing and killing him. If you're a bomber, claim them. If you're a sticker person, claim them. Whatever it is that you do, claim them. But don't try to fuck claim the whole wall of wax when you flat one dimension and just do one thing. I fuck with the walls, I get down with some pieces in here and there and shit. That's not my forte, that's not what I'm about. I'm about out here killing the streets, murking shit. The biggest advice I would give is to understand the repercussions and how bad they can fuck up their life with graffiti at this point in time. They giving fucking people felonies for writing graffiti. My man caught three felonies, all for one incident. I'm not going to go into the details or whatever, but here goes somebody with no record, clean record, good, pure person, and they got caught up in some bullshit with graffiti and everything. They went after him. When all the cards fell, he was left with three felonies. That's capitalism. That's the fucking good old American dream. Step on the little man to get ahead and shit. But, hey, shout out to all them dudes out there killing them streets. Whether people like it or not, keep graffiti world alive. You was asking before about uh, if I ever been caught. And that's the floor I'm knocking on because it's wood. I've been caught a few times as a little kid, like 13 years old, 14 years old, and like got the shit beat out of me or fucking got my hands spray painted or the fucking right dick on my back of my shirt with the, the paint. But other than that, I've never been back.
They run up there. Okay, thank you. internet has played a big part in destroying a certain purity from graffiti but at the same time though the internet allows people individually to record their own history depending on who you are people might pay attention people might not pay attention there are people that that make a nine to five out of it if you could put together a good product and sell it and you know you obviously you put some money into it and you're working which becomes like a nine to five if you could get a good return on that, then why not? It's up to you individually. Like One thing I've learned recently, talking to friends, the thing that I admire most about a lot of my friends, whether they be a musician or some sort of an artist, they struggle a little bit, but they work for themselves and they, and they do what they love most. That's what I want to do. I would love to art for a living but then I talk to some of them and their jobs are so demanding and so draining of them doing art that now they don't want to paint for themselves. There's definitely an art to it whether you think Individually, that it, it, it's art or it's not, there's definitely a skill behind it. If someone there on paper, calligraphy, people go, oh, yo, that's great, that's good. It's the same shit, it's just on the wall, it's a different medium. And because maybe it's taboo, people can't get past that to see that it's art. But fuck them, it's not for them. One thing that I always found really, really, really interesting, you look at a person's tag, right? And immediately when you see that tag on the wall, however they wrote it in whatever style it is, automatically a picture pops into your head. And you start forming an opinion. You start molding a character around that tag. And then when you finally meet the person, you know, sometimes you're so far off. You ever met someone and then you wish that you never met him? Like there was a disappointment in person? Yo, I, I love that dude, that dude be smashing it. And then you meet him and be like, oh, this is a <laughs> fucking dick, man.